Hey, <laughs> episode 18. What's your t-shirt say? Huh? What's your t-shirt say? My t-shirt says, just a girl who loves fruit. Wow, that's a dope shirt. Yeah, this is actually from Jack at Raw Tropical Living. I actually told him that I wanted, what did I want? I think I wanted the the strawberry or something. I can't remember, but oh, I was like, good? and he, yeah, he sent it to me. And he, I was like, thanks, Jack. <laughs> Where can people buy that on Jack's Instagram? Yeah, at Raw Tropical Living. He's got his uh, e-store and he's got some cool stuff. Uh, a lot of the t-shirts that I have are from him. I bought from him. So I'm like, but, uh, I want this one. <laughs> at Raw Tropical Living and then click the... <laughs> Click I still over. need one of those, bro. Yeah, I'll send you over one. I really need one. <laughs> We're going to raise it. We're going to raise it. it. It was just too low. Like, oh, yeah. Gap here. We're going to bring it up a little higher. Nice. And we'll send it over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cool. So we're in the midst of a whirlwind right here in terms of, you know, you and I putting out content and promoting this bundle that's going on, bundle mania right now. Yeah. And, you know, like, We've seen, we've seen, how many people are in the bundle? 50 or 45 people or something? Yeah, I would say around 50. 50, over 50 there. people are in that bundle. And we've seen like what's working and what's not working. And what we want to share with you here in this video are the top 10 things that the people who are selling the most bundles are doing, more or less, the people who are the most successful with it, uh, compared to the people who say, aren't selling that most and it's not a direct correlation because certain people in the bundle they may be selling a ton simply because they have a lot of followers whereas other people aren't selling that many because they don't have that many followers um, but still the people who are selling as much as possible are doing these 10 things like these 10 doing these 10 things in other words is going to max out your productivity and max out your ability to sell the most amount of whatever it is you have to sell be it an ebook be it a course, be it a coaching program, or be it a bundle. Okay? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's really interesting to be on the back end and to see like what people are doing and what they're selling and stuff. And some people who have maybe a couple thousand followers are actually selling less than people who have just 800 followers because it's the engagement. And we'll talk about that too. Yeah. Today. But yeah, it's just really interesting to see the differences between who's who's selling more and then and then we have like a top 20 where we update it every day kind of like a little race that's been that's been i i when you told me that you guys were going to update like with the high scores every day <laughs> i thought you were going to send an email with like numbers like one to number 10 with or numbers one to 20 with like names like changing every time but instead it's like this paragraph <laughs> like this comedic paragraph of like oh and on day one we have listen in the lead with with Chris right behind her. And then behind Chris, we've got Ted just around the corner and then behind Ted, blah, blah. And then like day three, it's like, oh, and so-and-so just got ahead of Ted and 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 <laughs> Lisa's still storming ahead, blah, blah, blah. And like, just like, it's like this uh, cartoon race going on, you know? That was totally 100% Chris's idea. Oh, it's so Chris. I was, yeah, and I was like, that is brilliant. <laughs> We're having fun with that. It's really fun, yeah. It's fun to write the emails every night and because yeah. we take turns writing the emails for the day. Oh, so you um, guys you guys alternate who writes that paragraph? Yeah, we alternate who writes okay. that paragraph, yeah. <laughs> cool, well, I'll, I'll try and like pay attention to see which ones you wrote, and which ones he wrote. I'll yeah. <laughs> It's so uh -huh. fun. Oh my gosh. But yeah, what we're going to share with you guys here today is going to be really valuable. It's going to be like, hey, here's what the people who are maxing out their potential are doing compared to the ones who just aren't. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get into it, shall we? First and foremost, first and foremost, and this applies to business in general, being a good entrepreneur in general. What we're about to share with you here, like the top 10, you stay to the end, we'll also give you a bonus one top 10 things that you can do to just be a better entrepreneur mm -hmm. in the same way that you can do certain things to become a better athlete. Say you're a runner, swimmer, a biker. These will allow you to become a better entrepreneur as a skill. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, Lissa. First and foremost, you have to feel good. You have to feel good. And I know that that's hard sometimes. I mean, both of us, 
there's days like we're human, <laughs> right? But I feel like for me, the best way for me to feel good is not just my diet. Obviously that's a big, huge plus, but spending time outside, meditating, taking time, self-care, that kind of thing to feel good and to make sure that you're doing things that make you feel good. Like if there's things in your business that you don't want to do, delegate. If you want to do something more, like you want to put more energy into something and you're really like into it, that's going to make you feel good too. So I feel for me, after doing this bundle, I have this, like these creative flow going on and I'm like, I just want to make another ebook just because I'm in that flow. So that's my passion and that's what I want to do. And that's how I feel good aside from the diet and the hydration and everything. But right. yeah. yeah. So what, what you said is key, like meeting those needs, right? Mm -hmm. Meeting those human needs of creative output and enough rest and doing what you love every day, right? Um, and then I think another key component is just your attitude. Yes. Like what kind of perspective do you have on things? Do you have like a, a limited attitude or like an abundant attitude? Mm -hmm. Do you have like a pessimistic attitude or an optimistic attitude? Do you have the attitude that everyone's out to get you? And everyone's trying to get one up on you? Or do you have the attitude that like you can learn from every experience you have, good, bad, or indifferent, right? Mm -hmm. Just attitude alone. Oh I really gosh. think that determines your altitude in life. Like attitude determines altitude. And it's like, whether it's in business or fitness or relationships, whatever. It's like, what kind of attitude are you bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. the, the, the students who perform the best in, in our academy and the entrepreneurs we see perform the best in the world always have the best attitude. Mm -hmm. They're constantly learning. Something doesn't work. They're not like, oh, see, I knew it wouldn't work. This is so dumb. I feel like quitting. Mm -hmm. Like they might feel that way, but they don't like express it verbally. Like I feel like quitting this sucks. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, like that happened. Okay, what can I do differently next time to try and tweak it? You yeah, know, they're what? neutral about it. They yeah. You can and, and it's okay. It's not meant to like say you can't feel things, mm -hmm. but it's like feel it and say, okay, release it and look at everything objectively as a learning opportunity. Oh. And that's yeah, definitely That'll allow you to feel good no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. That way exactly. you're not like hoping good things happen and you're not relying on, you know, even having to do certain things, like you don't rely on having to get enough sleep or having to meditate or having to exercise. You can at least just have a good attitude regardless. All those other things help, of course, with the chemicals and hormones in your body. Mm -hmm. But just the attitude alone is going to uh, allow you to surpass any any obstacle. So that's, that's first good. and foremost. Oh, and I wanted to add really quick is gratitude, feeling good and being grateful for what you have. And I've noticed that too with um, students and uh, other people in uh, making their own businesses and stuff is that even if things don't turn out, or even if you didn't sell as many as you had or whatever, at least these people who are the most successful are grateful for the experience. They're grateful that they tried. They're grateful that they created the webinar. They're grateful that they learned how to do it. So then we can go into the next point, which is refining, right? Because cool. you learn how to do it. You're yeah. grateful for that opportunity and then you can refine it. So true, yeah. so true, so true. We got some people in the academy and they're so stoked that they created their first funnel. Whereas other people are like, yeah, so what? I'll get the funnel. Like, what's next? What's next? What's next? And they're like, yo, stop to appreciate. You just created a funnel. Like, that's epic. That's sweet. Like, okay, sales didn't come in yet, but at least we built the funnel, get the foundation, mm -hmm. right? So just appreciating those, those steps along the way is huge. And then, like you said, step two, or, or not step two, but the second piece here of our top 10 is the skill of refining. Always be refining. So you and I are like never done, right? It's like <laughs> we're just talking about how we can make the next bundle better. Yeah. Right. We're talking about how we can make our next ebook better, how we can make the next webinar better, how I'm testing a new webinar tomorrow, then refine some things, see how that goes. Like constantly refining things. And not to make them perfect, but mm -hmm. refining them just to make them better. A yeah. Little better, a little better, a little better, a little bit better, a little bit better. Um, and and you just be, and you have to be like this because you never know what's going to work until you mm -hmm. launch it, you know. So we have certain certain students, and they're like, "Ted, what do you think of this ad, or what do you think of that post, or what do you think of this?" I'm sure you get people, Lisa, what do you think of this bio?" And like, 
you could give them your opinion and we do we see it we give your opinion but ultimately we don't know if it's going to convert better or not or sell more or not until it's actually launched you got to test it mm -hmm. and once you test it then you refine if necessary exactly so and the refining is like anything in life like yoga for example there's a reason why they call it yoga practice and not yoga perfect because it's a practice you practice every day you practice yoga there's no perfect end end yoga right you just practice so it's like entrepreneur practice yeah never an end date <laughs> exactly refining is key so, and that's yeah it's part of the attitude piece just come having the attitude of like i know i'm always gonna be refining always gonna be making it better and it's never gonna be as good as i want it to be mm -hmm. like it's just never gonna be as good as i want it to be because as every time you reach that next level okay well what's gonna be on that let's mm -hmm. be on that like as humans <laughs> now we're spiritual in, in, in creation and spirits always for expansion. So when we run, we want to run faster. When we lift, we want to lift heavier. When we, you know, uh, love, we want to love more. Right? When we make money, we want to make more money. Like we're just always for expansion. And so the funnel it could always convert a little bit better. The bundle, <laughs> we could always sell one more bundle, right? You can always get one more follower. You're, never, you're not going to be satisfied with a million followers. You want more followers. I know, right? And, and it doesn't matter how many followers you have. It's all about the connection that you have with them. Yeah. Yep. And so uh, the third piece here of our top 10 best things you can do to become a better entrepreneur is, is to hang out with other successful mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. And so, Lisa, before our retreat, I was at Funnel Hacking Live, this event in Nev uh, or Nashville, hanging out with a bunch of millionaires and a bunch of millionaires, specifically click funnels millionaires, people who build funnels and sell ebooks, courses, and coaching programs. And I was hanging out with hundreds of them. And I had never been around any of them before. It was like my first time hanging around with vegans. It felt so good, right? <laughs> right. Because they were all so successful, I got to hear the kind of conversations they were having. Mm. And I instantly realized that these people were having different conversations than the beginners mm -hmm. the beginners are always having like these conversations that that seem to um revolve around like there's a lot of like worry and fear mm -hmm. in the beginner conversations like what if this what if that and what if this and there's like this very like worry like it's very uh, what's the word um tepid or is that the word tepid they're very like um scared to like make moves yeah and, and the and the, when I was hanging around the millionaires, they're all like saying like, "Oh, I'll try that. I'll try that. Oh, shut sure, I'll try that." They're always like, "Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'll try that." And they're just really they're much more chill and enthusiastic at the same time. Mm. And just it was like a vibe, a different vibe, because I got to go back. And there was like two rooms, and one room was like full of all the millionaires who were crushing it, and the other room was people who were beginners. And I got to go back and forth, and the vibe was different. The millionaires were so, millionaires were so much more relaxed, mm. and people watching might be like, "Well, of course they're more relaxed." They <laughs> they have all this money but it's like no they have like a lot to lose they mm -hmm. have built up these million dollar businesses and they have thousands of people thousands of customers like riding on them they have a lot of pressure but by hanging out with them in that one room when i left to go back in the other room the, like the, the regular room the people who weren't millionaires i was like bringing that vibe back out there mm. and so it, it just changed who i was and when I went back home, when I went, actually went to your retreat after that, I was a different person. Like my standards were so much higher. When I, when I used to think $500 for a course was a lot. Mm. After hanging out with these guys for like three days, I, I doubled my price. I charged a thousand bucks for my program. Same course, thousand bucks, because it's worth it. And everyone in that room was charging thousand bucks or more. So I can't be the only one charging 497. <laughs> so just, change, just changing the people I was with instantly up my standards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's true with who you're hanging around with as well. Like if you're hanging around with people, it's like the crab in the bucket yeah. story, right? You're the only one in your family who's trying to write an ebook. You're the only one in your family who's vegan. You're the only one who's doing this and that and the other thing. And everyone else is like all these naysayers. And it's not about you. It's about them, right? So when you're, when someone says, well, your ebook might not sell very much, it's their fear projected onto you because they're scared that they wouldn't sell an ebook if they wrote one. So they're projecting it onto you. That doesn't mean anything about your ebook or your skills or what have you. It's all about their fears 
totally. So it's hard because we want our family and friends to support us, but if they're too scared, then. <laughs> But yeah, if you surround yourself with successful people and you spend more time with the successful people, it doesn't mean that you release or let go of those other people. You just spend less time with them. Yeah, less time with them. I remember too, growing up, there was like some really good, I used to grow up skateboarding and there's some really good skateboarders who lived in a certain neighborhood. And it's funny, like as a kid, like that other neighborhood was like, it was like two blocks up, but as a kid, it's like pretty far away. It's like, oh, we over there. <laughs> As an adult, I'm like, oh, it's just up the street. But it was like that neighborhood and our neighborhood. And like, we were like, not very good at skateboarding. A few people were pretty good. Um, but those kids up the block were really good. And then one of our friends moved from our neighborhood to that neighborhood. And instantly, everyone just knew, like, subconsciously, like, wow, that kid who just moved up to that neighborhood is going to become so good. <laughs> skating with all these guys now. Right? And we know that, like, who you hang out with, you become just like. Mm -hmm. So if you're hanging around five really good skaters, you're going to become the sixth. Same with entrepreneurship. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you can't hang around successful entrepreneurs, at least in, in embody our fourth tip here, which is to study successful entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Study them. See what they're doing. See what they're doing. And listen, I were just talking about this before the call. We're like, hey, on the next bundle that happens we're going to be studying all the top people and see what they do because they've sold more copies of a bundle than anyone else. Mm -hmm. So, and that's also something that the people, all the contributors in our bundle are really appreciative. I've had so many emails from contributors who are like, I have been learning so much from you because every single day I send out an email with tips and tricks and ideas of things that you could post and people are emailing me back and they're like I never thought of that that's a brilliant idea blah 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 and then the other people in the bundle are doing other things and you're just like wow like the creativity is so incredible and because they're studying the ones who are selling the most right so if you see your top 20 and you're like chef AJ all of a sudden is like blue past Ted. <laughs> it's yeah, like, what is Chef uh, AJ doing? Yeah. Chef AJ what has, do do, by the way? she actually has live on YouTube twice a day, every day. Wow. So she had, the reason why she skyrocketed the, that day was, it was right after we were live on her show and we were like totally pumping everything. We made the Hawaiian pizza burger and Nate made ice cream. And then all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> of the sales, it was nuts. But yeah, it's like go live. So you, you look at chef AJ and she's going live every day and featuring people on her channel and she's making a lot of sales from it. Yes. She right. has a lot of followers, but she interacts with the she have? Sorry. How many followers does she have on Instagram? Uh, on Instagram? I'm not sure, but on YouTube, she's like 136,000. Wow. Yeah. And, and it, her main gig is, is YouTube. She doesn't really do as much on Instagram. It's like all okay. YouTube. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So yeah. What do you think I'm going to do now? I'm going to go live on YouTube. <laughs> Wait for her. I'll try right? it. Another thing that I've learned from watching the successful people is that they engage with their followers a lot before anything happens. Yeah, true. So like, a lot of the people who are in the bundle who aren't active on social media, like maybe they posted like two or three times the last month, they start promoting the bundle, but they're low in the algorithm. Their yeah. followers are like, wait, what's going on? Yeah. Or they're not seeing their stuff. So it's very important. That's what I've noticed. My key takeaway from this is just to, to stay consistent. Or even if there's something coming up or you have a book launch or a webinar coming up or what have you, to engage with your people as much as you can so that when you do drop your webinar or your book or what have you, they are excited. They're ready. They're, they're warmed up, right? That's called digging your well before you're thirsty. Ah, there you go. There you go. But I dig love it. your well before you're thirsty. Because if you're thirsty and you don't have your well dug, <laughs> what are you going to do? You're screwed, right? And so it's the same thing on social media. And I used to run into the same problem. I used to be a ghost on Instagram. And I'm like, oh, I could do a webinar. All of a sudden I'd go on Instagram I'm like, hey guys, remember me? I got a webinar coming up. I'm like, I felt so cheesy. Right. You know? But <laughs> yeah. but now that I'm posting or I got my team posting on my Instagram every day, my name is on there all the time and I'm on YouTube every single day. When I do come up with an offer and an invite, it's just going with the flow. You know, mm -hmm. I've already got the momentum of eyeballs of people. So it's a lot easier. Um, yeah. And that brings us to our next point, which is creating over yeah. 
consuming. Yes, right? this, this is my favorite one. <laughs> just prioritizing output over input. Mm -hmm. Prioritizing what you post versus prioritizing what you're, what post you're reading, what post you're watching. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm watching stuff on YouTube and when I'm reading stuff on Instagram, I feel like unless it's like really good shit, which is really rare, <laughs> I feel dirty consuming it. It's almost like, yeah, it just feels like junk compared to how I feel when I output. Yeah. When I output, it feels like art. I'm like, ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's art. Yeah. It feels so good and pure. Exactly. So I know. Good. And there's so many, like, like I resonate when you say like dirty, cause like there's been times in the past, in the past past, where I get sucked in to YouTube watching like stuff that I'm like, why am I watching this? Like what? celebrity, whatever, or like, where are they now videos? And sure it's fun, but like, I always feel like I could have done something <laughs> during that time. Like, yeah. it's just like pointless information that I don't yeah. need. Yeah. And, <laughs> and even if it's good information, is it what you should be doing? Is it what you feel best doing? Mm -hmm. You know, like, is it, is it, is it going to lead to your highest contribution on this planet? Is it going to improve your legacy? And maybe it will, maybe, maybe it will, maybe you'll hear something in one of those videos and then you'll go out and say it on another video somewhere and everyone will be like, Oh, wow, that was gold. Cool. Thank you so much for sharing. And sure. It might contribute a bit, but it's like such a small percentage of what you listen to and watch and even read on Instagram is even going to benefit you like such a small percentage. Mm -hmm. So that's why the vast percentage should be definitely spent on output, creating, 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 creating. And it, it, it's, humans were really good at consuming because it keeps us alive. Yeah. Right? In nature, you'd, you'd want all the information in nature. All the information you can get, you'd want it in nature. Why? Because if there's a tiger around the corner, you need to know about it. If that mushroom is poisonous, you need to know about it. If there's worms in that mango, you need to know about it, right? If there's a, um, a, a tsunami coming, you need to know about it. If there's, if there's a murderer in your tribe, you need to know about it. And so humans were really good at, 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 at learning stuff and, and, and uh, maybe not learning, but consuming consuming observing observing yeah consuming observing and just getting new information new 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 is really good because in nature new information means important mm -hmm. but on social media <laughs> no and in in nature the thing was if you're out in that forest every day how much new stuff are you going to come across not very much right exactly it's the same freaking forest every day every now and then oh a new flower and every now and then a bear comes or every now and then a deer comes but like it's so rare and so we're so much, we're chill, but on social media, it's like new, new, new. Every scroll is like new, 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 new. Mm -hmm. And so we're really good at that. And not, that doesn't mean it's good for us. It's like storing fat. Humans are really good at storing fat. Mm -hmm. Listen, how easy is it to get fat? Oh my God. <laughs> it's very easy. It's the default, right? Yeah. <laughs> Getting fat is the default. It doesn't mean it's good for you to be fat. It's just the default. If you let yourself go, you'll get fat. If I let myself go, I'll get fat. And same thing on social media. If we both go on Instagram right now and YouTube and we just let ourselves go, we could easily spend four hours consuming shit, right? No problem. It's a dark, <laughs> deep abyss. That's no problem. <laughs> um, yeah. But it feels like crap after. Mm -hmm. So does eating a bunch of crap and being fat. Like it just, it doesn't feel good after, but we can do it. Doesn't mean it's good for us. So that's a huge piece. Output over input. It's the same as, you know, um, exercising versus just sitting and watching TV. Like, sure, you need a little bit of, not maybe not TV, but a little bit of balance of rest and activity and creation and consumption. But, um, but finding that balance and scheduling it in, like you could be like, okay, so for 20 minutes after dinner, that's my time. But it's like when the alarm goes off, you have to stop. You have yeah. to be diligent with yourself. Yeah, and, and maybe it's not balance. It's more of like um, harmony, just find that harmony. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, and um, when it comes to the, uh, we're, sure we're gonna run out of time, we're gonna, gonna chop chop. When it, comes <laughs> to, when it comes to also finding uh, harmony, you wanna find harmony in, in, in your scheduling. And so it all starts, like your schedule ultimately starts with what time you wake up and what, what time you go to bed. 
Yeah. You have to start with that framework, right? And, and you get everything in, happens in between, right? Your exercise, your, your feeding window, your shopping, your friends, whatever. But what time do you go to bed? What time do you wake up? Vice versa. This needs to be the, the, the framework. And so having the same bedtimes every night is so freaking helpful. It's the ultimate hack. It is. And there's a lot of people who say like, oh, I can't get to bed at that early. I'm just lying there awake. And I'm asking them, well, when's the last time you went to bed at that time? And they're like, well, I can't remember. Right. <laughs> so if you haven't gone to bed at a certain time, you're not going to be able to go to bed at a certain time, just like that. It takes a while to get into it, but it doesn't even matter what time you go to bed, as long as it's the same time every night. Mm -hmm. So it could be 2 a.m., just do it every night. It could be 8 p.m., just do it every night. And by creating the similar bedtimes and similar morning times, you're training yourself to be disciplined, mm -hmm. right? You're training yourself to be disciplined because, again, it's easy to stay up past the bedtime. It's super easy. No, no, That's no. default. Yep. <laughs> That's the default. It actually requires <laughs> discipline to get to bed even though you want to stay up. Um, so that's a huge one Just going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time every morning that really benefits you across the board in all areas of life, mm -hmm. nutrition, relationships, fitness, business, everything. Um, but every now and then you have to, you know, throw out the window and there is no good bedtime because you're raising a child or, or you're visiting your mom or dad at the hospital, you know, or your house is burning down or something, or in your case, Lisa, um, <laughs> the bundles going on, right? Yeah. You're dealing with 60 entrepreneurs coming at you all the time saying, Lisa, 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 listen, you have to deal with all this stuff and all these customers. And so it's just a short period, like a week where you got to kind of toss good sleep habits out the window and then try and get back into it at the end of the week here. So, Oh yeah. And I'm excited. It's going to be good. <laughs> get back to sleep. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. But then scheduling. There, yeah. The from, one, scheduling. Exactly. Yep. From there, now it's like, okay, now what happens in between? And that's where your scheduling comes in. And this is the seventh point where it's like, if you do not have a time in your calendar to get work done, it won't get done. Mm -hmm. 100%. Get done. But Try if it is booked in, if it is booked in, it gets done. Mm -hmm. If it's booked in, it gets, in. it's kind of like I write down my to-do list on here every day. And if I don't actually physically open this book, I don't do what's on the list. Mm -hmm. And I've done that so many times, like at least 25% of the time when I read a list in the past, at least I read a list and I never opened the book. I don't get it done. Mm -hmm. So I got to actually open a book and same thing with blocking on the calendar. So listen, I, what we do is every single Thursday at 2 PM, we have a date on the calendar and we just turn on our zooms, our zoom webcam and we work for three hours. It's mm -hmm. blocked out. We do the same thing on Saturday. So it's guaranteed six hours of quality work time. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot done. And, and when we do like Facebook ads or whatever yeah. we're working on, it's just, it's so focused work yeah. that is just like at the end of the three hours, you're like, wow, I, I got so much done. Boom. Yeah. It's incredible what you can get done in just an hour of those three hours. It's nuts. And the time flies by too, like that. It's not long three hours. It's a short three hours. And it's fun because you're creating. Yeah, all output. And something, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the eighth piece here is just avoid, it's a short one. We won't spend too much time on it, but it's just avoiding stimulants. Mm -hmm. Like coffee, alcohol, junk food, any sort of drug really, just try to avoid it at all costs. Mm -hmm. um, if you need to have some, like, cause you're at a party or something, just try not to try mm -hmm. to avoid the party in the first place. And if you do go, someone hands you a glass of wine, just hold the glass of wine politely, but like, just don't, don't feel like you need to drink it. Yeah. Um, but the coffee is like, you're not going to even feel like coffee if you're getting enough sleep. Mm -hmm. if, you're drink coffee, you're healthy. Like, eh? if you're eating healthy. Yeah. If you're eating healthy, yeah. and you're getting enough sleep. You're not going to want coffee. Mm -hmm. exactly. Coffee is for people who typically don't eat that great and who don't get enough sleep. To, 100%. Yep. Um, and then the reason why we stay stay away from stimulants is because what goes up must come down mm -hmm. so it can bring you up for a bit and you'll be super jazzed and you'll be like loving it but then you have to come down and i find the same that's even for me with chocolate i don't know if you get that effect with chocolate but i get that effect with cacao as well so i had to switch cacao with carob because i noticed like on chocolate my moods would be so good i'm like oh, i fucking love everything <laughs> and then after i'm like oh why am i so like sad 
this isn't me. I'm like, oh, I had chocolate earlier. Oh. So, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's stimulants. And then the last, or sorry, last couple here, number nine is Lisa. Not posting enough. <laughs> and it kind of ties in with what we were talking about before is that if you're not posting, you fall, you lose favor in the algorithm. So it goes down in importance. And because you're not posting, people aren't engaging with your post. So then all of a sudden you come up, like you were saying, you, you wouldn't post for like a month and then you come on and, and expect people to be like, oh, what what's going on? Like they're not warmed up. They're, they don't know what's going on. It's yeah. like stretching before a marathon. You have to stretch before a marathon. Mm -hmm. So you need to post before you sell and you need to give value. So not posting enough is, yeah, you got to look to the successful people and the successful yeah. people post. Not posting enough. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. If you were to look at Lissa's income and then look at the amount she posts, you'd see a direct correlation. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> direct correlation. More posts, more money. I know every email we send out, there's money. Every post we make, there's money. So And you'll get that. people unfollowing you because you're posting more. They'll be like, oh, they're annoying. Yeah. But that's just how it is. I'd rather have people annoyed and unfollow me than not post at all and have a hard time selling. So yeah. Or even not even just selling, like helping people. Totally. I can make a post with the top 10 reasons people fail on a raw diet or top 10 ways to prevent cravings. And if I'm not posting regularly, no one's even going to see that post. Well, very few people. And it's like, oh, you're trying to help people, but they're not getting it because you're not posting enough. Exactly. So yeah. Post more. Post more. We use later.com. That might be very helpful for you to post more. Yes. We schedule in at least three posts a day on later.com. So it posts for us. We don't even need to be on there. It does it for us. Uh, number 10, kind of kind of very coincidental that it's number 10. And it's like a great example of what's happening right now. It's all about number 10. Don't try and be perfect. Mm -hmm. So listen, I tried to make an awesome video for you here. Give you your top 10 best tips. We've run out of time here. I got to go. Don't worry about being perfect. We just did this video to the best of our ability and this is what you get. So don't try to be perfect. I see so many people not launching because it's not perfect yet. They don't have the best lighting. They don't have the best book, camera. They're, and then worse, they don't even get started because they don't have the best this or the best that or the best this or the best that. And then once they do get it all, they don't know how to set it up. And so they're just like, oh, I'm not going to do it. Listen, and I were filming this on a webcam. We've made hundreds of thousands of dollars with a freaking phone and a webcam don't need any of that stuff and don't worry about the content's not perfect it'll get better refine 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 exactly bonus tip number bonus 11 tip. bonus this tip ties into what we're about to go do right now i'm going to go host the class for the academy students are going to be spending the next hour or two hours asking me unlimited questions i'm gonna go get to that right now the more questions the students ask is i see direct correlation between the more questions a student asks the more successful they are in the academy yep so ask questions that's the bonus tip ask questions don't be afraid of asking silly questions or dumb questions or beginner questions. I know I've, I'm, I've been afraid of that in the past, but you can't be, you got to just ask questions and hopefully it, I mean, even if it's been asked before, mm -hmm. I like ask getting asked the same questions because I, I get a better chance to give a better answer. So totally cool. Uh, we got to run. Lisa, cool. thanks a lot. Peace. Ciao. Bye. All right. Ciao. Ciao. Later.